Hello, welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. And the journey continues. This is a pen that I bought and I bought it because I thought it looked pretty cool. And I was into plain brown pens, you know, nice professional looking pens that you could have in a business office, not that I go to any anymore, but this pen was just kind of like a relief that I needed to break out of the mold and go back to something funky and looks cool. So obviously I had to put it on a turntable being held up by a crab so you could enjoy it as it twirls around. I'm going to try to make this a fast video. We're going to go through, we're going to compare it to some other pens. We're going to get up, we're going to write with it, and uh, hopefully you can decide whether it's a pen that you might like to enjoy. Uh, my initial reaction is, is that for the money that I paid for the pen, in, in relative perspective, it's okay, but it's not a great value, which is what I like to be able to do when I purchase something. But as usual, I'm really glad I have it. Uh, I would have not really understood the pen or what it was or how it worked or whether it be something you could use until I held it in my hand and now that I've done that I can hopefully convey to you my experiences and we'll just wait for it to come right around and we'll get into more detail. So this is a relatively small pen. I think your Caveco Sport in length but it's really well done. I like that engraving on the cap band, you know, standard clip, but this resin is just kind of clownish is a word I might use, but just nice. Clip has a decent amount of tension to it. In fact, extreme amount of tension to it. We uncap with less than one turn, so that's always good. Section may have the same materials, the rest of the pen. You have your metal threads here. You have a number five Moon Man nib, which looks to be kind of on the extra fine variety. Unscrew the barrel and you find a push-pull converter based on the size of the pen. It's pretty much what you'd expect. And there's a small little spherical plastic ball in there to agitate the ink. This metal piece in this section I think is good. Metal threads in the barrel. So that's a very stable consistent, the threads feel good. You know, it's small. <laughs> it doesn't really fit in the hand unposted, but when you post it, it becomes usable. It's light. That section is on the small side, but usable. I wouldn't want it any smaller. You know, this is a pocket pen with a clip. You know, with that extra fine nib, you could take a lot of notes in uh, with that small ink supply on some pretty poor paper and it's going to work well. So we're going to compare it and then put nib to paper ink in the pen and put nib to paper. So I've assembled some traditional pocket pens to illustrate why the N2 I do believe fits into the pocket pen family. Here we have the Moon Man Wonkai which I th would say was one of the first Moon Men in this new series, which they continue to expand on and make it really nice. And of course, your classic Caveco Sport, your Delike Alpha, your Maru Pupen, and cannot overlook the Pen BBS 471. So, all of these have that ability of, I think, easily slipping in your pocket. And to me, the clip on this pen is there more for aesthetic reasons and functional reasons from my perspective. To me, a pocket pen means pants pocket, not shirt pocket. But I'm certain a lot of people might like small pens and therefore they might fit into their sweet spot. So the other characteristic of a pocket pen is they all post well and a couple of these are screw to post the Wong Kai, the Maripu pen and the 471 
The Delic Alpha is the longest one of this group, and it also takes a standard cartridge and converter, which the other ones do not take. This is an eyedropper, 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 and this one has that small push-pull converter in it, which to me you can also use in the Caveco. I'm not saying that it fits, but it's a similar size. All of them have about a number five nib, except for the Pen BBS 471, which has a really, really nice number six, and that's that round medium one that, that I think is a phenomenal nib. They all have relatively small sections, again, except for the 471, which has a standard size section, and the Moon Man 1 Kai is, is next in line, and the other ones are all on the small side, which for a pocket pen is not necessarily a pen you're going to use to write a novel with, but obviously taking notes or for portability, it suits the bill. I would be remiss if I didn't give a little shout out to what pens Moon Man has released, and most of, the, most of these were released in this year. You know, the N2, the S1 is from last year, but it has that nice koi finish. M100 is from last year. The M2, this is a newer version of it that just has a anodized section there, a little color, and got rid of that red band. It now matches the section. The N3, the M200, the M600S, the M6, and certainly a very impressive pen, the C1. So this is an incredible range from one pen maker. And... I might talk about Pen BBS and their variety, but Moon Man has even more variety. And they certainly don't shy away from pretty outlandish finishes to some subtle finishes to some great eyedroppers, wood, clear pens. So unbelievable. I'm impressed and enjoy writing with almost all of them. So what I think to put in the pen, I picked up this one as a right. I just think it'd be nice colorful ink to put in a colorful pen. So we'll give you the dimensions of the pen. As I said it's on the small side but one thing about a small pen is you can uncap it with one hand and I haven't practiced this but you can post it with one hand too. And it posts very securely it's a light pen, will give you those weights. And that section is about as small and probably a little bit smaller than I like, but you can hold it up away from the nib. The threads you don't feel, that little step up you don't feel, so that makes it nice. And that Moon Man nib, as we'll see, it likes the Azurite ink. I think you can see readily that this nib lays down a nice patch of ink. The minute this nib first touched paper, it felt good. It felt great. It's one of the best fine nibs I've written with in a while. It's just a pleasure to use. It feels excellent on this paper, and this paper has a you know, it's a little bit coarser than some of the real smooth papers, so, you know, with nibs, with feedback, you're going to get a bit more feedback on this paper, but this just works very, very well. And I've had other Moon Man fine and extra fine nibs, and they've not been as pleasurable as this one to write with. So I'm, I'm very, very impressed. This, this pen writes much better than I had any expectations. So let's rate the pen. 
I'm going to give it a 9.2. And I'm going to give it two checks for the nib. One check for the clown finish. And one check for, it's a good build. They, they, it's put together very well. All the parts fit together well. Feels good in the hand. And I have to admit that I don't get tired looking at it. You know, sometimes you need something like this to just bring a smile to your face. So I tried to make this a short video, but I always add stuff and think that hopefully uh, you, you as a viewer enjoy some of the extra bits and comparisons that I do. So thank you for watching. May you have many great writing experiences. Hopefully you find a nib that you like as much as I like this one. Uh, very big surprise. So put some ink on paper, find a nice ink that you like, put it in a pen that you love, and make some marks on paper. So we've reached the end of this video. Enjoy writing. Enjoy your life. Enjoy every moment. Bye. Until the next video. Nice color, too.